Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States. It's being called the most stunning upset in political history. A second night of anti-Trump protests in cities across the country. Some turning violent. In Portland, police say a rally turned into a riot when demonstrators started vandalizing vehicles and buildings, throwing things at police and blocking this bridge. Some so upset they burned several small American flags. And tonight, an 11-year-old Texas boy claims he was beaten by classmates because he voiced his support for President-elect Trump. By incendiary words that we haven't heard before in politics. A viral video that may be hard for you to watch. It shows a local mom kicking her child out of the house because he voted in a mock election for Donald Trump. In this video, she can be heard yelling, even cussing at the boy who is visibly upset. In this video, you can hear Chicago area teens yelling, he voted for Trump, while others beat a driver in the middle of the street. Greetings world, we are anonymous. We have learned that America is at the point of choosing. The media will say it is about choosing a president. But it really isn't. Our real choice is personal, and every generation must make the same choice. Will we continue to live in the past with what we know no longer works, or will we move forward to a new and better place? The people in state after state have made it clear. They cry out for a new path. Both with the same diagnosis, but both with very different paths to healing. Millions of Americans have chosen one outsider. We don't find our fuel in bundlers and special interests, but rather directly from the people. The wide-eyed youth of any age that haven't given up on the hope that tomorrow can and will be better. Ronald Reagan and Jack Kennedy were outsiders. They both represented a whole new vision and vibrancy. A new generation of ideas. Jack Kennedy looked forward instead of back to the first half century of World War. He knew that America could dream and build if we were set free. Not tanks for war, but rockets for exploration. Reagan looked out, to us the most powerful force for innovation that the world has ever known. There we found the new tech pioneers like Bill Gates and a young Steve Jobs. They had vision and the freedom to build a new world that that at the time only they saw and because they were free. They challenged the way and changed the way all of us live, work, and interact. Now it is our turn. This generation must first look inward to see who we really are, after years of being beaten down. Years of being told we couldn't, shouldn't, or wouldn't. This generation needs to answer a new set of questions. Can we? Should we? Will we? Are we still those people? Those dreamers and doers? Are America's greatest generations in our past? or are our best days yet ahead? We must unite because doing so is the first step toward uniting all Americans. The question is not whether all Americans can or will agree on a majority of issues all of the time. The question is whether a majority of Americans are hungry to rally around a set of principles larger than any single issue that a politician may use to divide us. It's natural when we talk about our nation's earliest days, that we focus our attention on the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And we can learn a great deal about a path forward by focusing on the passionate disputes and disagreements among our founding fathers, differences that were put aside only because of the weight and consequence of the foundational principles they sought to proclaim and the price to be paid if they failed to rise to the task. Today, we agree and disagree on a lot. And sure, areas of lesser agreement exist as well. But on the fundamental question, are we satisfied with the current direction of our country, we speak with one voice. We call on you, as JFK did in the 60s. 
and as Reagan did in the 80s. To chart a new American journey forward. One that isn't led by me or anyone in Washington, but by you. And millions of others just like you. One where we still have differences, yet we choose to concentrate on what we have in common. One that lifts others up and believes in the rights, responsibilities, goodness, and strength of all mankind. We have so much that binds us together, our families, our work ethic, our ability to dream and build unlike any people in history. But most of all our charity, our love for our fellow men and women and our willingness to sacrifice for those in need. Let us unite, on the things that have always made us great. We are great because we are good. Because over and over again we have chosen courage in the moments of crisis, freedom in the face of compromise, and hope in the face of challenges that everyone told us could not be overcome. Our sitting president ran on a slogan that should have been a great first step. It promised us, yes we can. Now is the time to take that slogan and put it into action. Yes we can was a recognition of the hope that we can and should recover. The problem was that Barack Obama's prescriptions only led to more elitist control from Washington. Less freedom for the people. But now is the time, as Americans, to once again reclaim that hope. To take another giant leap for mankind. To speak the words with all the power and might that we can muster and use the words that have changed the world time and time again. The words that the slaves yearned to hear from the American people and Abraham Lincoln when they cried out for freedom. The words, that Europe and Britain heard when they cried out for help defeating totalitarian evil in the 1940s. The words that led two men in North Carolina to be the first in flight. And half a century later the first man to reach the moon. And decades later, two men in their garage to come up with the Apple company. They are the words that will repair our tattered spirit lift up our economy and those who are barely making it, they are the words that will vanquish the evil of ISIS. And return the rule of law. They are the words that when Americans come together and say with conviction, they change the world. They are the vision of this campaign. Not yes we can, but now, yes we will. We will restore our spirit. We will free our minds and imagination. We will create a new and better world. We will bring back jobs, freedom, and security. We will find new ways to ignite an energy revolution with more jobs and greater choices. We will defeat the evil of Islamists and ISIS. We will live as neighbors, friends, and family in peace once again. We will heal the sick, feed the poor, and defend the defenseless. We will restore our rightful place in the world. We will do what Americans do best. We will live for others, we will change the world through the hope of freedom's enduring promise. And our unrelenting spirit. You can be empowered, and in a digital age it is all the easier for your voice to be heard. Your choices to govern your work, your education, your future. If only Washington will get out of the way. Join us on this journey of less talk and more action because we know you. You may have been knocked down, but America has always been best when she is lying down with her back on the mat and the crowd has given the final count. It is time for us to get up, shake it off and be who we were destined to be. Don't let anyone try to convince you otherwise. Here is the truth, you don't need us or any politician. But we do need each other, all of us, coming together as one, as we the people, because not only do we say, yes we can, beginning here and now we pledge to each and every one of us, yes we will. And now friends. Onward to victory. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. 
We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you the people have the power. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power, let us all unite! In a time of domestic crisis, men of goodwill and generosity should be able to unite regardless of party or politics.